closer, 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 closer. And at one point, you can see a lot of detail. After that, you'll start going squint. <laughs> right? Okay, so what your, your lens is capable of is called a minimum focusing distance, right? Which, which is somewhere probably here. After which, I, the eye cannot resolve detail on that. It loses focus. But at, at, at its closest, you can see some amount of detail. Correct? You can begin to maybe see what your fingerprint looks like. Yes? So that detail, what you start beginning to see, is what is called a macro photography as a genre. So you try to project things with a lot more detail. Right? So you've got abstract, you've got landscape, you've got floral photography, but true macro is where you want to show uh, things which are close to invisible or minuscule. Yes? And often we see, okay, if I were to go ahead and ask you, right, uh, saying, why should we actually observe insects or arthropods, right? How many of you have seen an uh, elephant in the last week? Unless until you live close to a corridor and you went to a zoo or checked online. Yeah, I am next to corridor. I saw. <laughs> okay, good. So that again, <laughs> that's a very lucky uh, person we have amongst us. A corridor is something where um, uh, herd animals generally use for moving between known paths. Right? You have several pockets. Like you've got, uh, say, the Kabini range and Nagarhole and Bandipur close to each other. So you've got known paths which animals connect between these. So those are called corridors. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. So if I were to ask, which was the last insect you saw? A spider. Probably, probably you'll bring up something at least in the last couple of days. And and mosquitoes. All right, great. So all of these are pretty close to you and you get to see them more often, correct? And something which is, you can go ahead and observe a lot more easier without having to spend too much time reaching to that location, right? So that lends itself uh, very well for um, exploring, spending more time with them. Yes? So we all say bird watching is great. Yes, mammal watching is great. We go drives and all of that. This also can give you a mode of meditation, mode of uh, really understanding. Just one second. Yeah, sorry about the break. All right, so I was uh, saying this can also form a, a great mode of uh, meditation and also uh, helps you bring out that inquisitiveness, right? Once you start getting that uh, inquisitiveness, it gets on to various phases of life. You also begin to understand applied physics, why it works, what, how the way it works, right? Why are grasshoppers able to jump a lot more further than say a human being when compared to its body length? So stuff, questions like that, I hope I can evoke in yes. So I'll just go ahead and give you a very short uh, brief of how uh, the whole insect world or the arthropod world is, right? Okay, so the first is uh, they, apply, they employ several techniques or modes. So the first being they have to survive and thrive. So one of the first ways of doing it is they go ahead and lay eggs in large numbers and they tend to stick together. So they've got strength in numbers. So here you actually see a shield bug, egg clutch. So can you believe some of them know uh, how to count? They lay an exact of a dozen eggs. And they also have to understand and pick the right diameter of or thickness of uh, a shrub so that they can go ahead and lay the eggs all around. So you see the whole structure, the, it goes in a decreasing manner, four, three, two, and behind one. And the other side of it is also going to wrap around that way. Any guesses what this is? 
These are also a steak plant. Ice cream. Uh, Brinjons. Firecrackers. Worms. Worms. No, these are actually, insect. Yeah, it, 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 these are cool fee, all right. So, so these are the, sorry, baboon, baboon, yeah, just baboon. all right. Baboon. Okay, sure. There, there's no eggs. there's no limit on the uh, creative assassin bring up. All right, so these are the eggs of what we call as an assassin bug. Caterpillar. Sure. So these are the eggs of a assassin. Eggs. Okay, yeah. Right. So all of these. Creativity. You can change the whole universe. Exactly. Correct. And now you believe how how uh, creativity and inquisitiveness hold the key to a lot of powerful doors. Right. Here, yeah. cricket balls. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. So these are the eggs of uh, eggs, what eggs. we call as uh, shield bugs, right? So here you see a lot of them laid together. So this obviously went a lot more than twelve. Are the eggs of a chipmunk? A chipmunk, a chipmunk does not lay eggs. Okay. A chipmunk is a mammal, right? So it gives is this, life birth. Uh, is this mosquito eggs? No, these are not mosquito eggs. Mosquito eggs are in water. Correct. Yes. So they uh, the uh, only the adult form they get out of the aquatic uh, world. The eggs and the larvae uh, remain within the water. I had uh, sorry to interrupt. But do you want to give them a scale of these uh, eggs? The size, the scale of them. Uh, sure. So this, if you can probably, uh, I did start with the whole uh, exercise of the fingertip, right? So probably the whole bunch would have been. I can fit maybe about ten, five or six of those bunches on the fingertip. That tiny. Then how small will the leaf be? This leaf I was is comparing it with the life with the uh, leaf. Like so this, big, this, I think, uh, maybe uh, mustard mustard seed size or slightly bigger, right? The leaf or the each egg. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the egg. Uh, the size can be compared to mustard. Yeah, probably so that, or a, or slightly larger than that. Uh, so, step you. Uh, before these, you showed one picture of the eggs, right? What, what? These or this? Uh, everyone, can we do questions later? The, Not now. Before uh, that. Some different kind of eggs. Yeah, this one. Uh, can can we do questions later? Let Uncle explain everything now. The voice is breaking. The voice is breaking. Not breaking for me. I think it's your connection. Atwik, your voice is not breaking for me also. Yeah, yeah I think. Guys, so don't. Can... Okay, fine. Don't ask questions. That's all. Continue. <laughs> all right. Okay. So we'll just uh, skip through, right? So uh, the insects go through various life phases, right? So they, you've got two, uh, two different distinct categories. One is a three stage one where a youngling or what we call as a nymph, which comes out as a, a miniature form of the adult. And that goes through its forms and then reaches the adulthood. And on the right, you have got a thing where from the eggs, a larva appears, hatches out. The larva has a feeding phase and then it has a slightly dormant phase called the pupa, right? This is where most of uh, things what we see. Anybody, what you see uh, around your house, especially with the recent rains, you would have seen on the damp uh, walls, you would have seen something crawl. Caterpillars, moth caterpillars, anyone? I've seen a moth. I have seen a itchy caterpillar. Correct, yeah. So those are the hair and they are uh, that's that's what causes the uh, itchiness or rashes. And that's one form of defense for them. All right. And then uh, once the larval phase, that's what that's that's the caterpillar phase that we you were just talking about. Then they go ahead and uh, feed and feed in order to uh, just go ahead and uh, form a pupa. And then from the pupa, the ad actual adult emerges. Right? Okay. 
So uh, once they've actually hatched, they need protection and need to stay on guard, right? Because the whole uh, natural world is filled with the whole um, cycle of predator and prey. Yeah, they are bottom of the food chain. Correct. So even in the food chain, even though we understand that insects may be at the bottom, within them they have their own food chain. Right, so you've got micro environments or micro food chains built in within each. And as you start to understand that, you will develop a much better understanding of how things work. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, how, what, do, what would you define as a habitat or an ecosystem? You guys can talk. Ecosystem? Mm -hmm. What is ecosystem? Yeah, what is an ecosystem or a habitat? Uh, I I think it is it's like a place where an in insect can uh, live, find food, uh -huh. and uh, have shelter. Sure. So that's a yeah. general thing. So, and as we know, including humans, most living beings do not live in isolation. Yeah. It's a complex interdependence. You've got prey. You've got predator. You've got your foes. You've got your friends. All along, right? Yeah. So it, that's, that's what we call as a whole ecosystem. It is all in balance, right? We often say it is uh, ecosystem is a forest, uh, ecosystem is a grassland, an ecosystem is a lake or a habitat is such. But uh, once you start noticing and observing arthropods, you'll understand that an uh, ecosystem or a habitat can be as small as, as one single tree, right? In the leaf litter, you'll have a different kinds of... Uh, insects that you'll find on the bark you'll find a different thing and even as you go up the canopy itself on leaves you'll find different things and then as on the exact top or at the top of the canopy you'll find different kind of insects right and that this is just studying one tree imagine expanding that into an area into a forest into a system like western ghat and then expanding it to the whole world Right? And that is, I think, what these tiny things actually teach us, saying how often we miss out on details which are right before us, but we choose not to look. Right? So here's a jumping spider female guarding her uh, eggs. So you can see, right, it has gone ahead and protected itself with a very nice uh, silk sheath. Right? So they have uh, something called a spinnerets using which they spin silk. And this silk is different for wrapping prey. It's different for building a nest. Uncle, what is yeah. it? Lines, lines and some dots. Thing. So these, right? So these lines. Yeah. So these lines yeah. are uh, the silk that, it's, that it has excreted to go ahead and make a nice little hammock for itself. So what it does is it goes ahead and finds a leaf, which is something like this, and then covers it with a silk sheet. It feels like uh, it's in water. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Especially with these sparkles and all that, right? Yeah. And what is that insect name is? This is a jumping spider. Oh. All right. Okay. How big is this? Uh, so this would be half an inch. Okay. So most of what you see, you'll be easily able to fit at, within your within the tip of your finger. Yeah. All right. So we all uh, know, right? People go ahead and build fences around their houses. Why do we build fences? Why do we build compound walls? To keep strangers at bay. Right. So here's another spider which has actually used a few thorns from the bush uh, shrubs around to go ahead and build a fence for the eggs. Pretty cool. And are the eggs inside that? Inside this sheet, yes. So it lays the eggs, then forms this thin sheet, and then goes ahead and uh, provides the protection around. So that's good. How big is this? 
uh, <laughs> all right, this is um, probably, everybody understand millimeters? I'm hoping yeah. yes, I'll probably yeah. answer that. Say maybe eight, eight, eight to 10 mm, eight to 10 millimeters. Okay. Uncle, what plant it is or tree it is? Uh, this is some, I think, the a teak uh, sapling, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Guys, 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 wait, 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 one second. Let him, let him talk. Questioning round will come. You guys can ask questions later. Kanda, can I suggest something? Yes. That people type the questions in the chat window, we can uh, answer them. Stop yeah, it. yeah, that you can do, yeah, better. Do that. Everybody can type the questions in the chat window, Uncle will answer them. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll move ahead. Okay. Sure. Yes. 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 You can move ahead. Sure. All right. And we saw one of this, which was laid out on the uh, leaf itself. But there's a chance the spider could have moved away or did whatever it could. And there are these others called the link spider, the green link spiders, which go ahead and actually hold on to the egg sac for the whole uh, hatching period. And all of this while, most of the times they do not eat. Unless and until the prey happens this to be... This is a sack in which the spiders their eggs, right? Correct, yes. Made out of... Yeah. Correct. So it's called an egg sack. Yeah. And then once it hatched, you, you can actually see these spiderlings, several of them in the background. And it's got a wing dank. Right? And here's a thing what we call as a cellar spider or a falsidae. So you can see these, which have just emerged from the egg. You can see the uh, orange or pinks, right? So these have already consumed, so these are, yeah, have already consumed all of the yolk from the eggs. And these are yet to finish. These are probably a little more hungrier than these. Again, look like rubies, but these again in strength in numbers. The moment they hatch, uh, they have a hard outer skeleton, which is made of chitin. Right, so they can protect their inner soft body with an outer hard covering. Right. So anybody who are fans of Iron Man, ah, I can see some smiles around. All right. So what does Iron Man do? He has a nice cool suit. Yeah, so imagine uh, Iron Man in his team or, or in his high school. He built a suit for himself. Do you think he's going to remain the same size as he reaches adulthood? No, right? He's going to grow. Yes? So what will happen to his suit? Will he fit in the suit? The same suit? Won't fit in. So what insects do is similar where they have to break out of the old shell or the outer harder exoskeleton and they perform this uh, thing a process called molting with the breakout uh, fit I am? yeah yeah last five more minutes is there so maybe you can also share about yourself how did you get into uh, your passion and what's your journey in this uh, in this and um, um, insect world yeah, then we can open up for uh, questions round, so okay. then people can connect with you on more questions. All right, sure. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, I grew up in Bangalore, right? And uh, the Bangalore I knew had, um, do not try this, but I used to cycle several streets across without touching the handle. And now I can't even get out of my house without having to break several times by the time I reach a main road. Right? And we used to have a lot of open spaces. All these open spaces meant a lot of empty plots. And those empty plots would have a lot of parthenium and a lot of uh, shrubbery. Right? So I'd go ahead and uh, start observing uh, ladybird beetles, the butterflies, the various kinds of uh, grasshoppers that exist. right? And the often uh, uh, timing-based Thing which I would some, sometimes take a very heavy torch at that time, the ever-ready steel one that you used to have, right? 
I don't know if uh, how many of you guys would have even seen it. Uh, so I'd actually take that and go ahead and find scorpions as well in the evenings, right? So mine has been a very uh, exploratory journey of observing nature. And then it's only with the onset of a digital camera that I got a camera in hand. And I had to just uh, say, you know what, I'm really not that crazy as people think. I am actually seeing things which exist there which people aren't observing around me. So that is how I went ahead and started this whole journey of uh, trying to photograph stuff around me. So I, I firmly believe, right, it is not just the photography or the images that you should go after. You do that, you'll probably get lucky once in a while, make images which are, uh, as people say, a fluke. But to make consistently good images, you need to really be a very good observer. You need to understand subjects. So once you go ahead and start understanding subjects, you'll know how to replicate, you'll know where to find, you'll know where they come and land. So do you know, uh, do, do you think uh, dragonflies are territorial? Which flies, which flies? Dragonflies, are they territorial? No idea? Yes, they are, and they have favorite perches. Right? Because they're hunters, they tend to have good vantage points. So if you understand these vantage points, you can get much closer to them. Right? And as you get closer, you'll begin to understand saying, hey, they have co compound eyes. Then you see compound eyes, you then go ahead and see, hey, they can twist their neck in almost 360 degrees, full rotation. Then you start looking at how they do it and then they have these very slender parts which connects their head to the body. So then you begin researching, then you begin studying. And then it's only I think when I broke out of uh, finished uh, my college that I really be began to go ahead and put applied science into field. But I, I think you guys have, are in a very unique position where you can start doing that when you're studying. So observe, learn how to see stuff, learn how to question the right things, right? And learn the uh, art of uh, understanding and opening eyes to the beauty that we see all around. Right, Leela? I think uh, that's, I'm, again, as I said, I am not a celebrity, I'm not taught, I'm not <laughs> nothing. I, it's just a pure, unabated, free-flowing passion that I have for uh, things which are wild and tiny in this my, my case. Yeah, we can hear so much about your insect stories. We have just lost into those. So maybe we can now open for questioning round. Yes, Charles, sure. Kanda? Sure. Uncle, can I ask one question? Sure, go ahead. You see some insect, how you will search? How we will search? All right. Yes. Okay, uh, if I say, um, okay, I'll tell you one joke, all right? I was going with my friends somewhere. I said, hey, look a bird, all right? I kid you not, he looked down and said, where? Yeah, so as uh, stupid as that, that might have sounded at that time, it also shows saying uh, we do not really care or observe enough to make mental notes, right? So we spoke about uh, in butterflies, there's this concept called a host plant on which they go ahead and prefer laying eggs on that. The whole life cycle sometimes finishes on that one thing, single thing. So similarly, you start making either mental notes or go ahead and uh, take down notes saying, uh, these kind of plants is where you find these uh, insects. These kind of locations, you go ahead and actually see uh, wasps or bees coming down to roost at the end of the day. Where you can find groups, where you can find single, where you can find the ant lions on loose soil. They go ahead and make ant pits. And that's extremely cool to watch. Right? So it's all about understanding microhabitats, understanding where to view what. It takes a little bit of training, but it definitely does. It gets easier with time. Uh, one more Thank question. Thank you, Uncle. Sure. 
So one more question is from where did you get inspired or uh, uh, did you get inspired by someone uh, on the in, about insects and stuff like that? Uh, well, insects, actually, I'll tell you one thing. Growing up, I used to think I'm weird because <laughs> most of my other friends would be, I'd play with them, but I'd also yeah. want that thing where I'd just run off to a unknown corner and go observe something, go pick up the ball from the, there. But also when I'm down there, I'll probably see what is there on that stalk. Is there a grasshopper? Is there something else? Mm. Right. So yeah. uh, most, of, most of it has been uh, self-cultivated, but Again, with the uh, social media, there are some uh, provide some great platform for uh, sh sharing the passion with a lot of uh, people, right? Uh, so there, there are people like Nikki Bay, Thomas Shahan, and closer uh, to home, uh, people like Vipin Baliga, and a lot of other uh, spider or uh, insect related groups or wildlife related groups, which give you that sense of, uh, um, I would say, belonging. <laughs> Because I don't just uh, think you, you need that to share that passion or the madness. And that helps it grow more. True. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what is the instrument, Shaunak here, I, what, what is the instrument used for taking these kind of photos? Right. So, uh, like we uh, mentioned earlier, right? we, we had this thing of uh, minimum focusing distance, right? So each camera and lens has a, a combination which gives you a certain minimum focus distance without which it cannot focus. So one of the easiest ways is to have a smartphone, right? And have a, something called as a macro clip-on. So it's just a lens which acts as a diopter and reduces the focusing distance. And then uh, allows you to focus a lot closer and gives you more details. Uh, the one I use, is uh, it's called a digital SLR, a DSLR, with a dedicated macro lens. And with a macro lens, it, it allows me to focus pretty close. And then I add some other uh, diopters or extension tubes to go ahead and magnify the image more. Uh, so uncle, can you share the link where you can uh, get the macro lens for the phone? If anyone is interested, they can. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. I'll probably mail it to uh, Leela or do you want me to search now? No, you can just send it to me. No, you can send it to me after you the session. You can send it. To, yeah, after the session, you can send me the link. Then I'll post it on Slack. Sure. Many were eager to know on the chat window about the spider egg. How big is the size? How big is the stack of size? And all this. Right. If you want to answer, uh, now you can answer. Okay, sure. Just give me one moment. Yeah. All right, uh, till I bring that up, I'll just go ahead and uh, riddle, put up some riddles, all right? Yeah, to which yeah. I'll go ahead and also try answering that. Mm, okay. All right. How many eyes does a spider have? Some say four, two. Four, two, eight, okay then. Four, yeah, four. 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 Okay, it all right. depends on what species it is. Okay, correct answer. All right. All right. So here's the thing. Uh, can you see this? Is the image visible? Uh, no. The window with the images, but not the image. Go to the share and you have to again share screen. Uh, I think, hold on, hold on. Let me just go ahead and share the full screen itself then. Yeah. Now? Yes, visible. Yeah? Eight eyes. Want to count? Eyes. There are eight eyes. Eight eyes. <laughs> All right. Eight eyes. Okay. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. Eight. Eight legs. Eight. Okay. Eight so eight. it has eight eyes, eight legs. It's a spider. Yeah. Most of the times. All right. Yeah. Not okay. every time. So here, here's something which has eight legs, but has only two eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is called. Uh, How big is this? Uh, oh my God! The eyes are so like compressed. Yeah. It looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? Yep, kind of. Yeah. So this is How called uh, opilions. Uh, so this, uh, this again, the full body size would be <laughs> that much, less than an inch. Oh boy. 
All right. Okay. Mm. Okay. So we uh, spoke about how um, molting happens, correct? So do you think this is an insect? No, this is, not like this is not an insect. Why? It has eyes. It has the compound eyes, which are visible. The antennae. A house fly, I guess. The eye cover is looking like a house fly. Okay, so this is what we call a, a exuvia or the outer skeleton of a praying mantis. So you can actually see how perfect that outer skeleton is when once, they, once it comes out. It's an exact replica, it's just that the inner body is squeezed out. How is it a praying mantis? All right. Okay. Is it shedding its skin? Uh, like like the skin yes but unlike snakes it it's not just that it's a full hard exoskeleton which it uh, exits out of All right so we we spoke about compound eyes and how they help so you can actually see this wow it's not just two it's not 100 it's several thousand and these are called as omatidia. So these are several eyes which cast one image on back to the sensor. Moving on its head. Yeah. And it was also visible in these things. This is a normal fly, I think. Yes, it is. A, a flesh fly. You can actually see, right? This looks like lace. Yeah. Almost like if you just run a scissor through it, it'll split open. <laughs> The eyes feel like it's a speaker. Yeah, it does. Yeah. We could buy two or three and uh, get a very nice music for the whole <laughs> Where will you plug it in though? <laughs> How can we connect them? It gives some electrical impulses. Imagine if you have eyes like that. Yeah. <laughs> How how could you take a picture so like this house play always house this is a spider plays like moves fast this is a spider this so, like, is uh no so this is what we call as a robber fly and again the uh it's literally built for the kill in every manner amazing eyesight and the whole body is it smiling yeah, you can make it smile. If you smile at it, it'll smile back. Uh, I have one question. Sure. So because uh, when when these in these insects can fly, right? Mm -hmm. So how close do you usually go to take those sort of pictures? Because you need, I I think you need to have the right timing also to get the. It is. It is. It is. Combination, right? So, uh, one is time of day matters. Second is you have to understand the subject. No when you can reach, when you can get closer, when you have to keep your distance. If it's feeding, mating, or molting, please do not try to take images at that time. You need to know how to keep your distance. And also, there's then comes the part of uh, photography, where you understand what are the working distances, how magnification can be increased, and all of that. Yeah, Hayat, uh, in extension to this question only, like uh, uh, yesterday I saw a spider and I was trying to catch it with a cloth and mm -hmm. at the moment I was getting like a little closer it was just uh, jumping here and jumping. there and I finally could not catch it. So how do you take pictures of these spiders and all? Uh, so again with the uh, subjects uh, it's all about cooperation. Right? So you, you will find some subjects which are uh, very fidgety or uh, scared there's nothing you can do but and in other times when you really give them that space and do not uh, get them into a corner they will often allow you to get close okay Thanks. yeah so again it's a combination of uh, field craft technicality understanding the subject all of it patience yeah definitely it does it will teach you that yeah what is that photo that uh, this? the first second row photo? This? First second row photo. 
this all right so yeah. uh, somebody did mention right here uh, saying four eyes depends on species it is true yeah, I it, it has eight but the layout differs so in this the jumpers have a lot more larger anterior median eyes is what they're called so they help in slightly more binocular vision Okay. Yeah. So uh, the eyes uh, can they only look straight? I had a question. All around. I mean, one eye. So because yeah. we have like eyeballs or something, we can we can see at least this much uh, mm. Mm. Uh, thing. But they have uh, uh, like all. Uh, it it is like all sides. Mm -hmm. So is it is it because only one eye can look straight? They need all eyes to look everywhere. Is it something like that? Uh, it they they do have retinas. So you, you can actually see sometimes when you're photographing them or videoing, you can actually see the retina move, the color changes of the eye. Yeah. But this again is a big topic. I, I'm not uh, qualified enough to answer in the right manner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know what is, how it gets processed. Is it like a 360 vision or each sensor is different? Not sure. I have a question. Sure. Uh, where do you like, do you go to a particular place where you find this do you go to a forest and find this do you have some particular places yeah definitely uh, the kind of uh, diversity that the higher the diverse uh, vegetation the better your chances of finding different species no doubt but then uh, what also happens is many of these would you will not believe i have not traveled for more than maybe 15 20 minutes from home Right? And at times it has been right in the backyard or in the garden. Oh. Dwiji uncle, you had a question, right? Dwiji uncle. Yeah, hi. hi. Uh, big fan of yours on some of the social media groups. Thank you. Thrilled to hear you in the Arohi Jatri. Uh, quick question. What's the ratio that you have in terms of, uh, you know, photographs that make it to your showcase versus the ones that you have clicked? Okay, good question. So I use something called uh, Fast Tone to uh, sort through my images, right? And I've disabled the delete confirmation. So often my navigation button isn't the right or left button. It's delete. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's what it is. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Hayat, maybe Miki, maybe you can explain in little more simpler, possibly uh, other okay. audience will. All right. So, uh, so which means, uh, so probably for about every image that uh, finally makes it as at least a keeper, at least tens, if not several tens of them are discarded. Yeah. Because a lot of different things, right? So it, it is about getting perfectly perpendicular to the subject, you got the lighting right, you need to also have the right engagement detail. Right, you had you had subject in one frame, you click, it's gone the next. I'm clicking a empty branch without anything on it. Can you show this last picture on the screen that you have? This? It has some eggs or something you know, on right. the last one. Yeah. So uh, these, okay, let's, let's see if I'll ask any questions or other uh, free guesses. Is this water bubbles? <laughs> okay, water bubbles, no, all right. These are bubbles of some kind, but okay, go on. No, sorry. Eggs. Sorry? Eggs. See where they're coming from. Eggs, I said eggs. No, this is why your elders tell you do not eat bubble gum. Ah, or it is susu. <laughs> no, it is not. Well, all right. So all of these, these are called, uh, these are belong to a kind of a plant hopper called psyllid, name, psyllids. And these are the nymphs which suck on pure sucrose directly from the stem, right? And what happens is all of this is uh, often taken in excess and are kept in these external bubbles. It's almost like you carry on honey pot. The put packet, is it? 
Yeah, foot pack. <laughs> you can see this, this one was like the most hungriest. This one is not yet. <laughs> So while people ask questions, Sayed, uh, uh, Skanda, can you ask, uh, uh, can I suggest Sayed to sh show more pictures while Thank people ask questions? Yeah, 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 that's, so, right, that's right. Chandu, there is a question on chat. Wait, wait. Hayat, there is a question on chat. Oh, yeah, Skanda, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a specific time of the day when it's, when it's best time to spot them? Yeah, it is, right? So uh, earlier during the day or later in the evening is when they'll probably come back to roost or uh, show slightly lesser movement or are not too, um, uh, what do you say, uh, easily spooked, right? And often if you start uh, noticing, making notes, you'll often find uh, wasps and bees and all of these. They'll tend to go and uh, perch or what we call as uh, roost for the night, right? So do you believe that, just give me one moment. Uh, there's one more question in chat. Sure. Uh, do you read about your subjects or just oh, yes, ob not. observation not. and or combination of both? But it's a combination of both. It's okay. often observation lead, which leads to the reading. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, is my, my screen is visible, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was trying to show. Huh. So what is this? So this is a roosting bee, a leaf cutter bee, which uses rests its whole body weight on only its mandibles. Hi, can you present that? So probably that will show them much clearer. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Better? Okay. Yeah. So if you could do it, so imagine doing a handstand and sleeping where you're putting all of your pressure just on your hands or maybe a jaw biting down on a branch and hanging that way for sleeping. That's what this is doing. So often you'll find them uh, roosting in groups. Uh, so one more question about the photos. Yeah. So you edit the photos later, like uh, post editing or in Photoshop or something like that? So two things. My uh, editing is generally very basic. It's only to sort of reduce the highlights to show some detail. Okay. Right. And the, the other question I generally get asked often is how does the, how do you get the black background if you're not doing Photoshop? Yeah, that's right? why even I had, I thought. Sure. Uh, so uh, once you start understanding photography, it is a combination of basically exposure, which is ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Hmm. Right. If you have a low ISO, high shutter speed and a really small aperture, often uh, your ambient light isn't going to be enough to register anything on the frame. Okay. Right? So if I just take an image with the, with just that, I'll probably get a very dark to black frame. What I do is then go ahead and add an external flash, which throws out light and that light is just enough to catch the subject and show that. So everything else remains black. Can you hear Hayat's voice? Can you hear Hayat's voice? Yeah. yeah, it's clear. Clear. So there are two questions here. Uh, yeah. Where are the eggs found un only under leaves or will light disturb insects? So again, uh, eggs are found in various uh, different things. So you've got this very fascinating thing called a giant water bug, which carries its eggs on its back. I don't know how it manages to place it there. That happens. Then you've got several spiders which carry it along in a disc shape uh, egg sac. And some of the eggs are found even on uh, spider webs. I don't know if that is a very brilliant move or stupid. I'm not sure. And then uh, most of the times you'll find eggs which are protected from the elements, underside of the leaves or uh, the uh, part of the bark exposed out towards the sun. Depends on species to species, but then this is what generally what it is. Other question? Uh, sorry, Skanda, I'm helping you with the question since you're listening to Hayat. So will uh, light disturb the insects? Uh, light as in general light flash? I think you flash. Uh, think. Right, Jayashree? 
Jayashree, is your question about uh, light from the camera? Yeah. Okay. So in this case, uh, what often happens is the flash is very minimal. So what I do is I do not try to have to harsh light. Right. So if you actually see a direct flash, it's harsh, right? And it also gives you a lot of shadows and high contrast. And contrast generally goes ahead and kills details. So what I often do is I'll have a very thin sheet of uh, plastic or uh, styrofoam, which sort of creates a very soft light, uh, soft box kind of effect and softens the light quite a bit. And again, this is uh, the light which is out for uh, with low intensity, but it also is for a very short duration. So I've actually seen uh, spiders and other insects when I've photographed, they've literally caught subjects right before me. So there's no real proof of them getting affected uh, adversely. Yeah, maybe Hayat, would you like to share some of the photographs what you have taken? We have uh, any other questions you can ask on chat. Then we will connect to Hayat, but maybe last five minutes we can see, we want you to see the photographs. Of? of some of the, the photographs. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just go ahead uh, with the section which I wanted to show the awesome and the bizarre. Right? So on the left, you, you, uh, you see this is a bagworm moth caterpillar. So in this case, it went ahead and picked up this, uh, the outer skeleton of uh, the um, shells of a snail, but the one in the middle preferred to be a carpenter. It actually was able to go ahead and cut small pieces of branches exactly to form a, a, a almost pyramid-like structure. And on the right, you see this is what we call as a poultice spider. All classic examples of being cryptic. And cryptic also means you just go ahead and blend in with whatever there is. So here's a nymph, nymphal form, which goes and blends perfectly into the bark. Uh, what do zombies and other things do when they bark? So whatever they find around, they pick up. So sometimes, if you notice, uh, even in uh, some of your areas of the home, you'll see these caterpillars move with small bags. Yeah. Right, so some of them have uh, a bag like casing, whereas uh, some of the others have a almost uh, a structural thing like a pyramid on top. Yeah, but why do they? So they're very do that? They, So this is to protect themselves, right? So they, they do not want to get attacked by predators and they also want to just look like dirt. Okay, right? you can't be attacked if you can't be seen, correct? Yeah. So that's the basic rule of uh, survival for most of these. Right, so here again. Uh, this is kind of camouflaged, the yeah, last this, one. This is, this is perfect uh, example of camouflage, yes. So again, strength in numbers, and they also have these very awesome pincer like thing. So these are all owl fly larvae. And the other thing is why you can look like leaf itself, right? Why not? So here's a leaf, a, sorry, a plant hopper, which mimics the venation of a leaf. So we saw this. Uh, what yeah. spider is this? What spider was that? So this, yeah, this, this. is this is a telemonia jumping spider. Okay. Uncle, the spider will jump. It does, yes. So the, uh, hence, and the other uh, easy to spot feature of these is the large eyes what is it what is its lifetime like how many years does it live see that um yeah yeah sure, Sorry. Sure. yeah skanda has logged out uh, because he has a power cut at home yeah all the other questions you can put in chat so uncle can show hayat can show his photographs in another one or two minutes and then uh, final uh, we can take questions after that Okay, sure. I'll probably just uh, yeah, yeah. We want which, to see your rare photographs, what sure. you have captured, and sure. Here's yeah. the venation of a, a dragonfly wing. Shows the awesome structure, which enables it to uh, be the awesome uh, aerial predator that it is. 
right? So you see a mantis on the left and you see a lace wing on the right, correct? Both awesome creatures. And there's another which give, gives you the best of both. <laughs> this is called a mantis fly. So we uh, saw the owl fly larvae earlier. So this is an ant lion larva, a lobster moth caterpillar. So this is the exact phase where probably in a day or two, this caterpillar is beginning to go ahead and form, get ready for its uh, pupil for phase. It will form a pupa. It's done eating for all it has to. So we spoke about how uh, debris is generally used to go ahead and camouflage. Here's a lace wing larva, which is just beginning to accumulate a lot of dirt. So we saw the uh, bubblegum plant hopper nymphs, right? So these are the ones. And here you see a uh, ant going ahead and farming these for the honeydew that these guys produce. So we are not the only farmers in the animal kingdom. Right, so just a few uh, quick things of, let's guess what these are. Any ideas? No. Okay, the answer was... No. A, the answer was... Have you appeared in house? Sorry? Was this on in your house? This was in the house, yes. Scorpion, maybe? No. Okay, so this is a mosquito larva. I have seen mosquito larva, but they don't look like this. Yeah. There was a pot full of them. Correct. Well, yeah. Okay, so done. Yeah. All yeah, right. it is so much loving to see your photographs and uh, it has um, given a different perspective about insects. But yeah so there were finally before we close sidan before we close uh, there are two questions on the chat window sure. what is the lifespan of lobster mouth caterpillar and uh, yeah i'm not too sure i haven't uh, studied enough to provide details on the uh, exact lifespan of uh, creatures yet yeah. yeah this is the exoskeleton of a praying mantis any guesses on what this is in the middle Colorful grass. Colorful grass, right. So this, this, uh, this is the, uh, okay. Have anybody of you handled a butterfly, which was probably dead or tried catching it and then you- Yes, some yes, powder, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's powder, yeah. That's even me. Yeah, it's powder, powder scale. Teams, uh, comes on my hand and um, the butterfly's color is on my hand now. You Now I have become a butterfly, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. Right. So, what forms that powder is the scales. That's the scale you see here. Okay. It's so loving to see these uh, photographs and also the information. Um, Hyatt, you have brought uh, our nature club members and photography members together to explore this session. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. So, it is already is this four a spider? Months. No, this is, these are... Uh, this part is the eye, yes, and here is what are called as ocelli or false eyes. Oh. Hi, uh, do you have a link or something where we can uh, see these photographs or whatever you have posted, uh, clicked or? I post most of the times on uh, this, so that's my Instagram handle. Hi, I okay. I your Instagram handle. And yeah. Full of pictures. Yeah, yeah, so we can, yeah, if anybody wants to connect more about insects and uh, insect work, connect with Hyatt, maybe I will forward your number. Wait, also to... don't, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah, I want to connect. Yes, fine. Yeah. Okay, we will uh, end the session with a closing thought. What sure. does insect world mean to you? We can start with Hyatt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be really glad if uh, this could have even provided any kind of uh, insight into the amazing world. This, I'm sure, is not even the tip of the iceberg. Oh, uh, yeah. Others, would you like to share? 
what does insect world mean to you for me before the session it was like who are out kind but now i see so much of beauty in it and so much of things to know about them when i see insects i feel like i'm seeing a miniature creature it is in fact yeah and that miniature thing has its own different world around Lila, you can maybe explain the question. Maybe many didn't get it. Yeah. Um, what does insect world means to you? Like. Oh, to me. All right. No, so for others also. Yeah, it is for others. everyone. Yeah, I think I'll let others answer it for me. We want to keep <laughs> it simple. What does insects means to each one of us? Maybe we can just share that. Yeah. Lila. Yeah. Yeah. What does insects means to you? Adai, Aditi, Dan. Share one word. After Hayat's presentation, a uh, super beauty. <laughs> <laughs> So much of color, um, uh, art, it's fabulous. Thanks, Ayat. Thank you very much. For me, I something like... to explore more. What is insects? Absolutely, yes. They are another beautiful creations of God. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Very stylish they are. Sorry? Very stylish they are. Um, they are the most unnoticed. creatures uh true sidan that is lot noticed too sorry at times they are lot noticed if they if you see an insect like you can only concentrate on it yeah and trust me once you start noticing them you'll start questioning saying hey were they always around or did i start noticing them only now even they are not noticed at times like suppose you like body and see an insect that something is there nothing is for me nothing is there in real world something is there you can think like that too yeah okay. so sir yeah. i thought i had you have a question i so i'll just go ahead and mention so there 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 are many insects which um have chemical warfare believe it or not there it is called uh, bombardier beetles which actually secrete uh, produced acid on demand which can uh, give you a lot of blisters on the hand at the least right and there are also other insects such as the plant hopper nymphs which secrete a saliva like uh, case which they go and hide themselves in often if you walk in grasslands you'll notice those yeah um uh hayat do you have five, five minutes or sure go on. Some, yeah yeah maybe you, people who want to log out can log out if you have some more questions people you can connect with hayat he has another 5 10 minutes before we start other time you have any questions you can ask neela i am supposed to be in craft club right pot no yeah 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 so hum We'll start in five minutes. We just see if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, we'll end the session at the craft club. Okay. Yeah. So, hi. There are so many species. So many, many.